All right, so in this video, uh, I'm going to go through uh, an example where we uh, are going to propose a Lewis structure, a Lewis dot structure, for a compound that has the molecular formula C2H6O. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use the method for drawing Lewis dot structures. Very exciting. All right. So in using this method, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to count the total number of valence electrons. We're going to divide that number by two, and that's going to give us the number of electron pairs. So carbon has four valence electrons, and there are two of them. Hydrogen has one valence electron, and there are six of them. Oxygen has six valence electrons, and there is one oxygen. So we have 8 plus 6 plus 6, that's going to be 20, 20 valence electrons. And if we divide 20 by 2, that's going to give 10 electron pairs. So whatever structure we come up with, it better have 10 electron pairs in it. So the next step is to identify a central atom. And the way that we identify the central atom is we choose usually the least electronegative atom. So in that case, our central atom, we have two of them, our central atoms are going to be the carbon atoms. The next step is to place the central atoms with an electron pair in between each. So if we do that, we're going to have carbon bonded to a carbon. Because remember, this line represents two valence electrons. This is an electron pair. So the next step is to continue adding atoms in increasing electronegativity order. And the next step following that one is that if after all non-hydrogen atoms are used, we're going to place electron pairs around the more electronegative atoms until each has four pairs. So you add the non-hydrogen ones first, and then you take care of step five, and then after that you start adding the hydrogens. So if we take care of that here, well, let's put the oxygen on one of these two carbons. I'm just going to choose uh, the one on the right. So step five says, place electron pairs around the more electronegative atoms until each has four pairs. So if we carry that out up here, we're going to put an electron pair here, here, and here. Step six says to add hydrogen atoms to atoms in increasing electronegativity order. Well, we have six hydrogen atoms, right? six of them. So if we start with the less electronegative carbons, we're going to get, we're going to end up with five of those hydrogens used up. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And the last one has to go somewhere, so I'm just going to put it on the oxygen. There's really nowhere else for that sixth hydrogen to go. It's going to have to go on there. And Keep in mind, like I said, these two bonds, there are these two uh, electrons here. This electron pair can also be uh, used as a bond. So another way to write this would be, you know, to have this as a line. So same thing over here. Okay? So, excuse me, well, I forgot to put the uh, lone pair electrons here on oxygen. Very important. Okay, so we have just come up with a Lewis structure and the next thing to do is to take care of charge and notice that the charge on this thing, there's no, there, there's no given, you know, plus or minus charge, so we know that this thing is actually neutral. It has a net charge of zero, and if you can convince yourself 
that if you look at all the formal charges on this thing, all of them will add up to zero. And it turns out that all the formal charges in this chemical species, in this compound, are in fact zero, which sums up to zero. Okay, so there we have a Lewis structure, a legitimate Lewis structure, for a compound with the formula C2H6O. Now, if you take a look at this, um, maybe there's another way to write this structure. In other words, maybe there's another structure that uses these same atoms, but maybe the atoms are arranged in a different way, and that could still be considered a legitimate Lewis structure with a net charge of zero and no non-zero formal charges. So maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Well, in this case, it turns out th that there is another structure that you can draw. Instead, suppose, instead of putting these two carbons next to each other adjacent, suppose we put the oxygen in the middle and then put the carbons surrounding the oxygen and then the six hydrogens will go around the carbons. Now the question is, does this structure satisfy the requirements to be a legitimate Lewis structure? And the answer is yes, because there are no non-zero formal charges and the formal charges add up to the net charge, which is zero. So this is also a legitimate Lewis structure for a formula, or excuse me, for a compound of the formula C2H6O. And the one above, the blue one, this one is called ethanol. And the one down here is actually called dimethyl ether. So there are two Lewis structures. They're two completely different compounds. They have different properties, both chemical and physical. And this sort of brings about some uh, ambiguity in our notation here. Here we have C2H6O. This notation doesn't necessarily show us what's bonded to what. So oftentimes what you'll get is you know, a, cer a different notation that sort of tips you off as to which Lewis structure or which compound we're talking about. And what these structures are called is they're called condensed structural formulas. So so condensed structural formulas. And we use them to, like I said, just sort of tip off the reader as to which compound we're talking about. So for the one for ethanol, the condensed structural formula for ethanol looks something like this. CH3, CH2, OH. And conversely, the condensed structural formula for dimethyl ether looks like this. CH3, O, CH3. These two structures both have the same amount of each atom. They both have two carbons, they both have six hydrogens, and they both have one oxygen. But notice that the way that we order them is different, and that corresponds to the bonding arrangement about, about these two things. So these two compounds, uh, dimethyl ether and ethanol, are actually said to be isomers. And isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formula, but something about the order of the arrangement of atoms is different about the two of them. So take a look at them again. They both have the same number of hydrogens, same number of carbons, same number of oxygens, but the arrangement of atoms is slightly different, and that actually yields different properties, both chemical and physical. So just sort of something that you run into when you draw Lewis structures. Sometimes certain molecular formulas have more than one correct Lewis structure. So hope this helps and good luck.